This episode of The Anxious Truth is brought to you by me, because I'm not just a podcaster, I'm also an author. I've written several useful books on anxiety and anxiety recovery, and I know you're going to find them helpful. You can find them on my website at theanxioustruth.com. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth, the podcast dedicated to understanding and overcoming anxiety issues like panic attacks, panic disorder, agoraphobia, monophobia, and things of that nature. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of this fine program, what I hope is a fine program. I'm glad you're here. This is episode number 179, recorded in October of 2021. Today's topic is understanding the difference between following the principles of anxiety and recovery versus asking for instructions on how to recover. And this is important. We haven't really talked about this yet, but it's important to understand the difference between following principles and asking for instructions because everybody in their journey through an anxiety problem and the recovery process kind of starts asking for instructions. It's okay. It is okay. If you are naturally drawn right now to, to look for as many Instagram posts as you could find that give you seven things to do during a panic attack. I feel you. I understand. Like everybody starts there. Everybody starts by saying, this is this crazy monster. My own body and thoughts are against me here. I'm terrified. I can't leave my house. This is ruining my life. I, it is beyond my control. I am powerless. Please, internet, please helpers, please therapists, please psychoeducators, whoever, please give me things I can do right now to feel better. I understand you're asking for instructions and I get those questions all day long. If I were to go on my, say my Instagram right now or my Facebook group and ask a large number of people, Hey, ask me questions, ask me anything. I'm going to get most of those questions. Probably 70% of those questions will be asking for instructions, instructions. So why do people want instructions as opposed to saying, well, can you teach me about what this is? and how I can apply the principles of disordered anxiety and recovery to my situation. Like that would be the more productive question long-term, but very few people actually ask that question. It takes a long time or some period of time. I could say a long time. It takes some period of time to get to the phase where you are actually interested in that, right? Now, why is this? And again, I'm going to use that that example of the social media post that that lists, you know, for the 10 zillionth time in your Instagram scroll or on Twitter or Facebook, seven things to do during panic, five things to say when you're anxious, five mantras you can use, three things you can, you know, eat that will lower your anxiety, the top five vitamins that are good for anxiety. Those are instructions. Those are instructions. Take this, eat this, chew this, swallow this, drink this, rub this, say this, wear this, touch this, smell this. Those are instructions. And we are naturally drawn to those because when we feel like things are out of our control and we have no agency here, like this anxiety thing, my, my anxious sensations, my anxious thoughts, these intrusive thoughts, these scary things that are ruining my life right now. They are beyond my control. This is a monster that is attacking me and stalking me all the time. I have no power here. So please give me five things I can do right now to fight this monster and make it go away. I get that. I get why you want instructions. Now, instructions generally are now focused. Instructions are focused on the now. Give me five things I can do now because I can feel a panic attack coming on and I need five ways, steps, to stop it right now, because I need to feel better right now. The only problem with that, and you may be starting to understand this, depending on where you are in your journey. And again, if you are in the early stages of your journey, and you are still seeing this as I just need to find a way to make this stop right now. I get you, I feel you, I understand my heart goes out to you, I understand you are desperate for immediate relief. But you may be far enough down the road, or you've been trying to do this, give me instructions on what to do. Give me tips, any tips, give me tips. So I understand that if you're in that situation, you're looking for a relief right now. I need to make it stop right this minute. You may already be down the road enough to understand that. Well, every time I do that, I can get some relief right now, but then in two hours or tomorrow, I'm back again, asking for the same tips or trying to find 
better tips, new tips, more tips to feel better right now, right? So the, one of the key differences between following principles and following instructions is that generally speaking, in the, in the, in the context of recovering from an anxiety disorder, instructions are based on immediate relief, make me feel better right now. And I, and I understand why you would want that. I'm not saying any, you shouldn't want that. Everybody wants that. I would want that. Every human being would want that. But, and, but they're based on the here and now. Generally speaking, they're going to be focused on how can I make you feel better right now? And I'm going, to, I'm going to throw something out here because it's important. Like I understand if you're listening to this podcast, then clearly you're taking the initiative to reach out, to learn, to ask for help, to try to, to try and make things better. And my hat is off to you. I, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to give you a big old thumbs up for just listening to my podcast or any podcast like this, because clearly you're trying to get better. And that's great. That's really great. So pat yourself on the back for that, because I pat you on the back for it. But understand as you're consuming this type of information, that if you're continually going back for the well for instructions for immediate relief, you can easily wind up in like a blizzard condition in your head where you're overwhelmed with instructions. That's really common. So I want instructions because I need to feel better right now. And I don't feel like I have any power. So I need somebody to tell me exactly what to do right now because I want to feel better right now. And I don't know what to do right now. And then if you seek out those type of instructions, prescriptive instructions again and again and again, you can get buried in them. You can probably right now, if you're, that, if you're in that situation and you've been kind of collecting instructions from different people like me and, and others online, then you are likely have a very long list special breathing, things to sniff, oils, things to eat, special things to wear. I should put my toes in the dirt. I need to walk in the grass. I need to look at the trees. I need to look at the birds. I need nature. I need calm. I need chakra clearing. I need oils. I need meds. I need supplements. Like you start to get this, you get buried under this giant pile of prescriptive tips and steps and instructions on what to do. And that can be really overwhelming. So you're just trying to not be overwhelmed. And then sometimes you can wind up overwhelmed trying to not be overwhelmed because I don't even know what to do next. Like I have this, am I supposed to breathe? Am I supposed to ground? Am I supposed to sit on the floor? Am I supposed to look at the trees? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? You know, I keep having these thoughts about death and existence. Like, am I supposed to think positive? Am I supposed to choose happiness? Am I supposed to do a mantra? Should I listen to a radio? Am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to chew gum? Am I supposed to snap a rubber band? What am I, am I supposed to get ice to distract myself? What do I do? you can easily wind up getting buried and feeling very overwhelmed by instructions that are designed to make you feel better now. But from a social media content creator perspective, I can tell you that the most engagement I could possibly get, and I refuse to do this. If you follow me on the socials, you'll know, I don't, I don't generally do a lot of this stuff. You know, the most engagement I could get, and if I want to build giant numbers of followers, I'll just keep telling you what anxiety feels like. I'll just keep telling you five steps you can do. I'll just keep giving you five different steps for panic attacks again and again and again. I get a lot of clicks, a lot of likes, a lot of follows. But then you just keep coming back to me for more and more and more of those. And that can get frustrating and overwhelming. So if that's the situation you're in, you're, you're instruction-based right now, I get you. And I understand it. That's starting to be overwhelming. Or you're starting to feel like, I don't understand. This isn't working. So you're getting discouraged. I can't get better. I'm clearly something is wrong. I'm never going to get better because all of these instructions don't work for me or they don't work consistently for me. I understand why I get you. I feel you. You can get better. I know you can. So let's start to change our focus now from here and now prescriptive, discrete instructions, step one, two, three, four, five, do this to, to feel better now. Instead of going that, let's, let's take a step back and say, okay, what if we look at it a different way? When I start to play these guitars behind me, and if you're not watching on video, there are guitars behind me and there always are in these things. But when I start to learn how to play these things, I need my teacher or my teachers to tell me where to put my fingers. Just, just show me where to put my fingers so I can play a D minor chord. Just, just tell me. Just tell me where to put my fingers and I'll just put them there and I'll strum and I'll have a D minor chord. Then tell me where to put my fingers for an A minor chord. Then tell me where to, how to, then tell me how to do an F bar chord. You know, then tell me how to do triad inversions. Where do I put my fingers to do all these inversions? Okay, I mean, I could ask for instructions there. But sooner or later, that's going to get really old and ineffective because if I want to start to actually either write my own music or play songs that you hear on, you know, whatever your favorite music, I can't ask my teacher to tell me, well, now what do I put my fingers? Now do I do it? Now where do I do it? Now where do I do it? It reminds me of a story when I was a little kid and this sticks in my head. <laughs> I remember I, I could have been more than maybe four years old, five years old, probably even younger. And I sat in the kitchen with my mom and I wanted to write a letter to my friend, a letter, adorable, right? But I, I didn't know how to spell anything. 
you know, I was, I was really lit. I was really low. It was probably closer to three or four. And I remember I had to ask her how to spell every single word. And God bless my mom. Like how she didn't jump out the window of our apartment at the time is beyond me. Like she should have easily just run out screaming and asked for help because I was making her nuts. But I had to ask her how to spell every single word. Now, I was a kid. I was little. I don't understand the principles of grammar and sentence construction. So that's a little, you know, it doesn't exactly apply. But I remember that very clearly. And then as I got older and I started to understand letters and writing and how to make words and sentences, I didn't have to ask my mom how to write every letter and word of a, uh, to write to my friend anymore, right? So the same thing happens here. Same thing happens here. Um, when you start to step back and say, well, let me start to really think about understanding what the nature of this problem is. Let me think about really starting to understand, even though I don't like to hear these things, like why does this guy keep talking about doing hard things? Why does he keep talking about facing my fear? Why does he keep talking about surrendering to the worst outcome? Like, why do I have to, you know, accept it? This sounds crazy to me. But sometimes you have to stop and say, okay, well, let me just separate myself from instructions designed to make me feel better right now. And maybe I got to learn a little more about what this thing is. And you either sometimes have to decide, make a conscious decision to do that. I'm going to step back and start listening to this now. I'm going to have to start learning the principles of this. So that I don't have to ask every single time I have a different thought or sensation what to do, right? I'm going to learn what disordered anxiety is. I'm going to learn the principles of how it operates. I'm going to learn the cognition underneath that. I'm going to learn like, well, this is the overriding principles that we use to deal with these problems so effectively. And when you start to understand the principles, you don't have 77,000 different social media posts telling you what to do minute by minute. You have guiding principles that when you begin to accept them for what you have to be willing to do. And if you're, if you disagree with these principles, you're welcome to do that. You don't have to agree with them, but if you are willing to say, okay, I'm going to, I, these sound right. I'm, I don't like them, but they sound right. And I'm going to really embrace these principles. I'm going to understand. I'm going to start to apply these things to my own recovery journey. I'm going to step away from asking people to tell me what to do every minute of the day. And I'm going to start to understand what I have to do so I could do it myself. It becomes far less overwhelming, far less overwhelming. And I'll tell you why, because if you are right now in the habit of very common, I see this all the time in my, in the community surrounding this podcast. Hey guys, um, I was doing really great for the last three weeks. I, I, you know, I, I haven't been really nauseous anymore. Like you were right. It really went away, but oh my God, last night I woke up in the middle of the night, my heart was pounding and it, it was skipped a couple of beats. And how do you, any tips for that? Like, does that sound familiar to you? You know, or like I was doing so great. Like, you know, I was having thoughts about like, you know, uh, maybe I don't actually love my family and those, they were dragging me down and I'm pretty good. I've learned to move through those, but now all of a sudden I'm really focused on like health, uh, getting, getting sick. I'm having intrusive thoughts about becoming sick. How do I deal with that? Sound familiar? So like one thought goes away and another one takes its place. One sensation goes away and another thing takes its place. You know, one situation resolves and another situation presents itself that makes you anxious because that's what life does. And then you have to run back and ask for new instructions. Whereas the person who has started to understand the principles of anxiety and recovery would be able to say, okay, the principle of dealing with a, this thought was, was this. So now I'm having a new thought that's scaring me and bothering me so I can deal with it the same way. I use the same principles across multiple contexts, right? So I understand the principles of chord structure and triads and chord progressions so that I can, I don't have to ask my teachers where to put my fingers to play every song I want to play on the guitar. So it becomes far less overwhelming and far easier. And I, I don't mean easier in terms of effort. It doesn't make it any easy, like it's smooth sailing, but it becomes less cluttered. It just becomes less cluttered. However, taking a more principled approach rather than a instructions approach to recovery means you're taking on a whole lot more responsibility. Uh, so we have to acknowledge that. And sometimes that seems scary or even impossible. Like it seems certainly more possible to just run to your Facebook group and ask the group, you know, how do I, it's much, it will feel easier to do that. I understand why, like, I don't, I don't want to read a book. I don't want to read this giant 400 page book that Drew wrote. 
you know, even though this is literally like the principles of recovery and then how to apply them. That's what I wrote here. I'm not trying to sell you a book. I mean, it's a great book, but there's a reason why I wrote The Anxious Truth the way I did. And there's a reason why this podcast sounds the way it does. And there's a reason why my Facebook group sounds and looks the way it does. Like we are so based on the principles and teaching the principles of recovery and helping people learn and apply those that you know, it, it matters. And so when you keep having to run back to your favorite support people and ask, well, what do I do now? Well, what do I do now? Well, what do I do now? That starts to become very tiring and discouraging. Like, oh, I feel so weak. I, I can't stand on my own. I'm never going to get better. Something must be specially broken about me. It's not. It's You're not specially broken and you can get better. You can get better. But I, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my experience, in my experience with a lot of people now, I've been doing this for many years, and many thousands of people, is that principles beat instructions every time. Every time. In the end, if you talk to people who have actually gone down the road, who started in the same maybe dark and, and feeling seemingly hopeless and confused place that you might be in right now, they, I was you, I was there. Uh, other people that you may see, the admins and mods in my Facebook group, people who recovered, people who hang around to help just because they're good people, right? And they want to pass along that experience they were you too. And along the way, they either sat down one day and said, I'm tired of asking for instructions, I'm going to start to learn and apply the principles or just naturally over time, they start to pick up the principles and use those. So it's a natural process, it kind of happens no matter what you try and do, you will start to understand the principles if you are willing to accept them. But if you are going to just insist continually that you must be given instructions on how to handle the thing that scares you today, that becomes really frustrating. And I understand your frustration and I feel for you. I do. So if you are, what you, if you're kind of feeling stuck on the treadmill a little bit, like I can't seem to get better. I just keep going through the same advice again and again and again. I keep looking for new. I'm following new people every single day, trying to figure this out. I can't seem to make it work. I feel broken. I feel hopeless. I think I'm never going to recover. I can never get better. If you're in that situation, I would tell you take a little time and don't beat yourself up for that. Don't at all. I would not beat yourself. I wouldn't beat you up for that. Like, I understand why you're in that situation. I do. It's normal and natural. You're not a failure because you're, you're in that mode right now at all. That is not failure. But if you are there, I would say, take a step back and say, okay, well, maybe, maybe it's time for me to start to approach this a little bit differently. Maybe I could take a little bit more. I don't want to say ownership because that would imply that you're not, you're not responsible somehow, or like, oh, you're shirking your responsibility or slacker. I don't mean that at all. But like, oh, maybe I have some agency here. Maybe I could stop and really start to learn and apply principles. I, I'm able, maybe I'm able to actually do that. Maybe I should listen to this crazy guy in the microphone. Like maybe he's right. Maybe I can actually learn and apply these things instead of continually running for rescue instructions every single time. It will make things better for you. I know it will. And I know that you can do that. So to wrap it up, you can try to recover by being given continuous sets of instructions for every individual fear, sensation, thought, context, or situation, which isn't terribly effective on the long run and becomes really overwhelming and frustrating. Or you, you can begin to understand the principles and concepts behind disordered anxiety and your particular problem. And you can begin to understand that you can apply those principles and those concepts across multiple fears and multiple sensations, thoughts, contexts, and situations. And that becomes more productive on the long run. It leads to more lasting, durable recovery that is applicable across multiple life contexts. And it's far less overwhelming because you don't have to look for 72,000 lists of things to do during a panic attack. Like it will clear things up in your head. And man, I got to tell you, there's a lot of relief that comes with that. If you're just feeling snowed under by all this anxiety advice, starting to follow a more principled approach really helps that in a big way. All right. So that's my little 20 minutes on, you know, principles versus instructions. I would hope that as you go down the road and as you progress in this journey, you start to head more toward the principles of recovery and less toward, you know, just asking for instructions every time. It makes a difference. So that is it. I will end as always with Afterglow by my buddy Ben Drake. You can find Ben and his music at bendrakemusic.com. Thank you, Ben, for letting me use the song. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming by. Comments, questions, any way you can find me is great. I will address for a second the fact that I cannot answer direct messages. I'm really sorry. 
I, I get so many of them. I know you guys want to send me emails and ask me DMs, I, but a comment on an Instagram post or a question in my Facebook group, that's a good way to do that. I'm active there and I will try to help you there, but I can't answer every comment and question privately. I just can't. I'm really sorry. I could if I would, but I can't. So that's it. If you're listening to the podcast on iTunes or some place that lets you rate or review the podcast, leave it five stars if you're digging it and then take a minute and write a review because it helps other people find the podcast and then more people get help. And that's what we're all about in this community. And I guess if you're watching on YouTube, a video, whatever it is, like and subscribe. I'm supposed to tell you that. Hit, I'm supposed to tell you to hit the bell button, but whatever. Hit it. Don't hit it. You know it's good for you. I ain't going to tell you. And that's it. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you in the next episode. I hope this has been helpful. And I will remind you, as always, from my stolen line from The Mandalorian, that this is the way. Now in the city and you're living fast. No looking back or dwelling on the past. You know you'll never get another chance. So go and live your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push through the pressure like an atom bomb. You keep on dancing like it's your last song.